Hey everyone, this is Sandeep back with another video. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about CSS selectors. So let's get into the presentation which I have made. I'm doing, I'm trying to do something new from this video. So let's jump into the presentation. So today I'm going to tell you CSS selectors mastering the art of targeting HTML elements. Yes, it's really an art to you know target your HTML elements and write CSS so that you know you can decorate your HTML elements. And before I jump into the video, before we talk about CSS selector, I I I wanted to give in one important update. You know, I'm putting a lot of effort, a lot of hard work to coming up with the con content, you know. So this this is a new strategy which I'm trying to follow. I wanted to share with you. So I'm creating notes around a lot of things. So the first thing I want to tell you about, you know, I'm going to put this link in the description. So I'm creating, so you can go to my GitHub page of Code with Sandeep and there I'm creating all of these notes. Okay. So like I have created the notes around my master branch for CSS selector. So say, suppose, you know, now you have learned about CSS selector. Now you're working on any project and you quickly need a reference, right? What are the different types of CSS selectors available, right? You can just go to this link, click on CSS and you can click on CSS selectors and you'll find notes around it, right? You can quickly skim through or quickly go through all of, all of the types of selector. Like there are so many selectors out there and I have created quick cheat sheets or quick notes around all of these selectors. And even I'm not stopping here. I, I have also created an Instagram page. You know, I got this idea one day I was going through Instagram feeds related to productivity. I'm more interested into productivity and learning and all those things. So I thought of creating a page. So I have created a code with Sandeep page also. So probably, you know, you're sleeping, maybe you're not able to sleep or maybe the last thing you want to do before you sleep, you know, so you can go through all of these notes on my Instagram page also. So I'm creating Instagram pages for, for all of the topics which I'm going to cover. So I think that's it. That's it. That's the update I wanted to give you about. Now let's jump into the presentation and we are going to talk about CSS selectors. Okay, so CSS selectors, mastering the art of targeting HTML elements. And you have too many choices when we talk about targeting HTML elements, selecting all those elements and styling those elements. We have too many choices, I can tell you. So there, there are five different categories of selectors which we are going to learn in this video today. The first one is simple selectors and it has name, class, ID, group, universal. Then the second category is combinator selector, descendant, child, adjacent, sibling, general, pseudo class selector, <laughs> name sounds like, you know, uh, kind of weird uh, pseudo class selectors, first child, last child, read only, etc. Pseudo element selector before after attribute selector. You can target the attributes also. And if you know anything else other than all of these options, do let me know in the comment box. So please add if you know more. So I'm I, I'm going through all of these categories quickly, but I'm going to cover each and every category in detail. In the in the next part of the video okay so let's jump in jump into it and let's first start with the simple selectors so we're going to start with simple selectors and everything is going to be practical so i'm going to create a new project so let me jump into my finder window so i'm going to no i need to open a finder window right and on the deck on my desktop you know i'm going to create a new project called css selectors you also create the same folder code with me, CSS selectors, and I'm going to open this folder inside my Visual Code Studio code. So I'm going to open, I'll go to desktop, and I'm going to open CSS selectors. Okay, trust. Okay, so the first category of selectors, it's really simple. That's why the name is simple selector. So I'm going to create a new file called simple.html just to just to have a separate file for each category. So I'm going to create simple.html and I'm going to add one more file called simple.css. And don't worry about the naming convention or the file name or the code I'm writing here. As I told you, you know, I have all those notes created and it has a different structure and it has all the 
all the reference i mean the entire reference manual is available on github so you can always go there and refer obviously we need html because we are going to use html elements only we are going to target html elements uh, to style right using css so i've created an html file structure here and i'm going to refer my css file also here so i'm going to use link tag for that and the reference will be simple.css now the first category of uh, first category of say, css selector that i'm going to target is simple selectors so the first one which is which is really simple called the name selector i mean if you know html if you know all the tags in html you can just use the name of all those tags you can target them by their name and you can style it it's uh, that it's that much simple you know so i'm going to create a basic html structure here maybe i'll go with a simple article tag so like i'm writing a blog post here and that article is going to have a heading one okay i need to write it in the right way so i'm going to put heading one and that heading maybe i'm going to give that heading as article one i'm just using some of the some random text here I'm going to put one paragraph here and that paragraph is I'm going to put some lorem text here. So maybe I'll go with lorem 7. So now I have my HTML structure. I'll go into my CSS because we are going to learn art of targeting HTML elements. So I have article element. I have body element actually. I have article element. I have h1 element. I have paragraph element, right? All of these elements. So now I can target all of these HTML elements by the name. I just need to go and write body. I just need to go and write article, H1, P, something like that. So I'm just going to target some of my elements. Like I'm going to target my article probably. And I'm going to give it a background color of let's go with this light color. And I'm going to save. And let's open this HTML file in the live server so if you don't have a live server plugin please install i'm using vs code here you can use any editor whichever you like i'm going to open my file in this document i'm going to put it in parallel actually let me resize my window a bit so i'm going to put it okay <laughs> let me let me do this so i'm going to put it like this and the another window so that you know we can see the live pre preview of the code changes because i don't want to switch windows in between a lot so i'm going to put this windows these windows just align to each other okay so you see here right i got the background color and uh, i'm going to make it smaller maybe i don't know or maybe i'll make this window more because i need to show my code that's why okay so probably i can put enters enter here and just to show my code right and i'm going to put my paragraph here something like this you see that right so i've targeted my article by its name and i've given it a background color of uh, of some antique white now let's target the other elements like i'm going to target the h1 element and maybe for h1 um, what do you think we should change the color let's try that i'm going to change the color to let's go with some of the fancy colors see that so i'm targeting the element by na their name it's that it's really easy and last one i'm going to target is my paragraph and my for, for my paragraph i'm going to use font size maybe and i'm going to increase the site size to 2 rem let me try that let's see how it works so this is how and even maybe i'm going to increase the font size of this one also so for this for this one i'm going to go with 3 rem see that the first one the simple one is just to use the name of your html element you can target your html html elements by the name article h1 paragraph and you write whatever style you want to write inside that so this is very simple selector uh, the name selector let's move on and talk about next selector which is id selector so for id selector i'm going to use the same file and you can give id to each and every or each individual html element like i'm going to give this article an id of article one something like this maybe i can give id 
to my heading also so i'm going to give it heading one and maybe i'm going to target this paragraph also and i'm going to give this one as text one so you can target your html elements and you can you can give them an id whichever id you want right like i'm targeting this article and i have given the id of article one this one heading one and this one is text one and now i can use these id names and i can target this i these elements by their id and i i can style them so instead of doing this i'm just going to remove this save you see that my html page has been refreshed so to target an element with their id name you need to use a special sign called hash and i'm going to use that id name of article one and let's give it a background color of say i'm going to go with this color this time see that it has applied similarly i can target the another one so let's go back here so i have targeted article one now i'm going to target heading one and then probably i'm going to target text one also so let's give it a try heading one really easy and this time uh, i'm going to put some, give, give some background color to this one and let's go with this green color and i'm going to use i'm going to target the another one called text one and let's give it a background color of say chocolate see that so the next one that is the id one so you can give unique ids and as as i said unique ids this is really important and i would like to mention about this point on each page you should have one id only one so it's like you know you cannot reuse the same variable in programming right once again similar to that so on each individual page you can use article one once only so don't do this you know you have given this article article one maybe you are writing another article here and you have given it id of uh, article one again this is wrong you shouldn't do that so you should have one id per page that's the rule you need to follow let's move on and talk about the next selector which is uh, which is a class selector and this is uh, this selector is uh, really useful and we use class selector most of the time while while doing the coding okay so let's talk about it so for class selector i'm going to put i'm going to use a keyword called class so i'm going to give uh probably i need to change the structure here so maybe i'm going to create some paragraphs here so i'm going to create different paragraphs maybe this one i'm going to give low rem i just need to use low rem 4 probably and i'm going to create one more paragraph this one i'm going to give low rem 3 so i'm basically i'm going to create four different paragraphs just to explain the concept here so i'm going to use two here and the last one will be another paragraph where i'm going to use lorem 5 okay so i have five sorry four different paragraphs i have created here and we're going to talk about class selector so for class you you can use a class like i have used id you can use class attribute on the html elements and you can give them a name of any of the class so like for example i'm using a class of success here okay and it has a meaning right so anything which has class of success i want to give them a green color so it's just an indicator that something good has happened so something has been successfully done so i'm giving it a class name of success i'm going to use class of uh error here and the next one you can understand you might guess you know i'm going to use one and here i'm going to give another again i'm going to use success so i've created different class names here and you see that i'm repeating success here right so in case of id as i said you know you can have one unique id per page but in case of class you can use that particular class name any number of times on any page or multiple pages so that's the beauty of classes here yeah? 
So it's like it's like you know component style. Say suppose you want to create a panel, right? You can create a panel class, put all these styles into it, and apply that panel to any div, any section, any article, or whichever HTML tag you wish to style. So I'll go back here and I'm going to delete all of these styles and don't worry about it. All of these nodes are available on the GitHub page. So I have four different paragraphs. The first class. So as in case of ID, I have used hash. In case of class, we use dot and then the class name success. So for success, I'm going to have a green color. So let me find out a good green color. So probably I'm going to use this dark green here. And for the, I need to put the semicolon also. And for the error one, I'm going to use color of, uh, color of red. Let me find out a good red color. So probably I'll use dark red. And for warning, I'm going to use orange color. So let me find out if I can get some orange color. I'm going to use gold rod. This looks like orangey. And for the last one, I'm, I don't need to repeat. So I'm going to say, and you see here, right? This has, this paragraph has assigned a class of success. That's where the color is green. Error is red. One is orange, gold color. And again, the, for the last paragraph, I have assigned success. So class selector, you can use a class attribute, give it a class name. You can target, you can create all those classes inside your CSS file using something called dot syntax. And, and you can use classes as many number of times as you want. This is the beauty of classes. Next, let's move on and let's talk about the group selectors. So I can group selectors together and I can target elements and I can style them. So again, I'm going to remove all of my HTML from here so that I can start from scratch. So let me remove. And this time I'm going to create an article and inside that article, I'm going to have a heading one. Probably I'll go with article one. Article one will be my heading and I'm going to put some, again, some lorem text here. Maybe I'll go with lorem five. So I've created one article here. I'm going to create another article, which is, uh, which is going to have another heading and I'm going to give it article two create some paragraph again lorem text i'll go with three this time and and actually i should have picked all my paragraphs from there but that's okay i'm going to create different paragraphs here so first paragraph with lorem two and second paragraph with lorem four and i'm going to go with three paragraphs only lorem Okay, so now I have, uh, I'm going to show you like how you can target, you can group selectors and you can, you can style them. So I'm going to give, give this ID of uh, article one and I'm going to use some classes here. So I'm going to give this one a classes of success, class of success. I'm not going to give any, uh, I'm not going to give any other classes or any other IDs here just for the simplicity. So now, I'm going to go back to my CSS. I'm going to remove all of this. And now I can target, I can group selectors. I can group name, ID and class selectors. So there is a possibility, right? You might have some of the, some of the name selectors, some of the ID selector, some of the class selector, they're going to have some common style. Maybe they're going to have the same font. In that case, you can group all of those selectors. So now in my case, I'm going to group my article tag. Okay, my article has ID also, so I'm going to group article one and I'm going to group my success class also. So all of the three different ways of targeting element I'm using here by name, by ID and by a class. So I'm using all of them and maybe like, maybe I, I want to target this and I want all of them to have same font size, right? Maybe I want to target them and have a same font size. I can do that. 
and I can them give them a common style. See that? So th this style, this font size of 2rem has been applied to article 1. It has been applied to this article tag. It has been applied to this article, which has article 1 ID. And it has been applied to my success class also. So just for the for more example, you know, I'm just going to create a separate class styling for my success and I'm going to give it a color of green. See that? Right. So you can combine selectors together and you can override and you can create individual style for all those all those group selectors also like you can target this article and create a style article one with ID and like I have created success here. So this is this is about group selectors. Let's move on and talk about the last one and the quick one. And <laughs> that one is called a universal selector universal. Yes, so I'm going to put some I'm going to just keep the first article here and I'm going to save you see here, right? Just look at this. You see some spacing here, some spacing here, some spacing here. So there is some spacing which has been added by by the default styling of the element. So H1 has some margin padding, you know, uh, by default. And uh, if you heard of a reset, right, there is something called reset, which we do. And this universe selector is basically used for doing the reset. So what is universal selector? Universe, universal selector means a star. A star means I'm targeting all of the HTML elements on my page, on my pages. All right. So I'm saying, hey, hey, CSS or hey, CSS, go ahead and target all of the elements, all of the HTML elements on my page and uh, apply the style. So I'm going to give some style here, padding of zero and margin of zero and i'm going to save and just focus on the focus focus on this part of my screen i mean look at this area now i'm going to save and see what happens see that all of the padding all of the margin which has been applied to h1 paragraph has been removed so the meaning of star star is like a god in css selectors it's a universal selector so when you use star it applies styling i mean this star indicates take all of the html elements and apply this style and we use basically we use star for resetting our css so i think this is a good time i've talked about all the simple selectors and don't forget to go to the go to this page you know just uh, you can see a glimpse of or you can see all these all the selectors all the css selectors but you can click on simple selectors and i have all these files here you know all the categories i have created separate files for them you can go through these notes you know you can learn you can understand you can read through it in your mobile also on your desktop also so i have given examples also so you should be able to practice using these examples so let's have a quick pause here come back and we are going to talk about, I'm going to talk about the second category of CSS selector and probably I'm going to cover about which one is a second category. So I'm going to talk about another selector called a combinator selector. So let's have a quick pause, come back and we'll talk about combinator selectors. Welcome back. Now let's talk about the next category of CSS, H CSS selectors, which is combinator selectors and there are four different ways you can target your HTML elements using combinator selectors. So I'm going to create a new file just to differentiate between different types of selectors. I'm going to create combinator.html and let's add one more file called combinator.css and I'm going to cover all the combinator selector inside this HTML and CSS file. So let's put some HTML structure here and I'm going to refer the CSS file, which is combinator.css. And I'm going to add some HTML structure here. So let's, let's add a section and inside that section, I'm going to have a heading one let's uh, let's give it a name of article one something like this and i'm going to put some paragraphs with some lorem text 
I'm going to put one more paragraph with some more lorem text. And inside that, I'm going to create, I'm going to write one article. And this article is going to have a heading two of a sub article, something like this. I'm just using some random, random text here. And inside that, I'm going to have one more paragraph with lorem five. I'm going to save and I'm going to run this with the, with the help of live server. And let me expand this one. Okay. So I have my HTML structure created. The first combinator selector. So basically combinator selector works in combination. So you, you basically, so, so let's say uh, I, this section is a parent for H1 paragraph, paragraph article. And this article is a parent for H2 and paragraph. So we, we always have a hierarchy in our HTML structure. And uh, let's say you want to be more specific, right? So probably you need to target all the paragraphs. So you can definitely use a, use a P tag, right? So say, suppose I want to target all the paragraphs. I can just use the name selector or element selector to target all the paragraphs. But maybe like you want to target only paragraphs inside this section, right? Inside this section, and all the paragraph inside its children. So basically I'm talking about all the paragraph who are children of this section and grandchildren of this section. So if you want to do something like this, you want to target in, in, in such a way, we use something called a combinator selection where, where I'm saying, okay, take the section, target this section and get all the paragraphs. I mean, target all the paragraphs, even the children and grandchildren. So I have two children here for this section and there's one more grandchildren, one more paragraph inside this article tag. So that's how it is going to target and, uh, and style the elements. So I'm just going to change the color to maybe I'll go with aqua and I'm going to save. And if you go back and see, see that? all the paragraphs. So I, I have a section inside that section. I have two paragraphs. They are being targeted. They're colored uh, with this color. And I have one article, which is which which is child of a section and inside that that paragraph is a grandchildren. So it's really easy when you want to target the children and the grandchildren, you can use descendant selector and descendant selector is actually separated by a space character. You just need to remember the space character we are using here. Let's move on to the second one, which is called a child selector. And it's, it's really similar to how the descendant, descendant selector is, but there is one difference, right? So in this case, in case of, comb, in case of, uh, in case of this uh, descendant selector, it's targeting the children and the grandchildren, but say, suppose you want to target only these two paragraphs, right? You just want to target direct children of this section and not the grandchildren. And we have a way for that. To do that, now I'm going to write another CSS. So I'm just going to put some comments here. So this is for descendant. I'm just putting this descendant. I'm going to comment it. Now I'm going to talk about a child selector. So this is going to be a child selector. I'm going to put comment. So I'm going to target, I'm going to use section and you need to use this greater than sign. So it's, it's, it's a convention, right? It's saying that I'm targeting the direct children. So I'm targeting section inside that section. I'm targeting all the paragraphs who are direct children. And I'm saying, just go and change the color or maybe I'll use a background color here to maybe this color. Now, if I save and if I go back, see that this section has two direct children, two direct paragraph children. This paragraph doesn't belong. This paragraph doesn't, be, it belongs to a section. It's inside a section, but it's a grandchildren, right? So you're targeting the direct children using this greater than sign. Now let's move on and talk about the third 
category of selector which is called a sibling selector and uh, you know the meaning of sibling right and so your cousin uh, or your uh, your brother or sister so those are your siblings so say suppose uh, in this example you know let's i'm going to add one more paragraph here and uh, i'm going to just i am sibling something like this of article okay this article tag so i've just written text so say suppose you want to target this paragraph so this paragraph is actually a sibling of this article and if you want to target this paragraph you can use something called a sibling selector and i'm going to just add some notes here just comments so i'm going to target so i want to target this particular selector right i want to target this paragraph which is sibling of this article so get the article tag and then i'm going to use the plus sign or maybe i'm going to make it really simple let's target the article and to target a sibling of article we use something called a plus sign and after that plus sign i'm going to say paragraph so target the article first this article and i want to target the sibling and sibling to this article is paragraph and you need to remember one thing that sibling should be should be next not the previous one so it's going to target this paragraph and not this paragraph to style right to the, to apply the css i'm just going to use background color in this case and maybe i'm going to give it a background color of blue and now if i go back see that this is how you can target the siblings the next element to this particular element let's see one more example so i'm going to target this h1 and after this h1 i'm going to target this paragraph so you will see right it's not going to target this paragraph it's going to target this paragraph only so next element only so i'm going to use uh, h1 and next to h1 i have two paragraphs but in case of sibling selector it's going to target only one paragraph so i'm going to use background color in this case and let's go with this chocolate color i'm going to say see that it's targeting this paragraph only a really simple kind of selector so we have a limitation with sibling selector i mean there are there will be use cases where you want to use this particular selector where you want to target the next sibling only but there might be the use cases where you need to target all the children who are who are siblings who are next to the next to particular element like take take the example of this one right maybe i want to target this h1 and i want to target all the all the next sibling all the paragraphs after this h1 right something like that for that purpose we can use something called a general selector so i'm going to comment all of these tiles probably uh, so that you know I, i can start from scratch so i'm going to comment all of this just not to confuse you and this one also now if i go back i have the initial html structure now i'm going to i'm going to use something called a general selector i'm going to talk about general selector and to select all the sibling all all the next siblings right who are like i'll take the example of this one i'm going to target this h1 and i want to target all the paragraphs after this h1 so i'm going to use h1 and then for the general selector we use this tilde or a squiggly <laughs> there are different names for this and this is a character which is located uh, just above the tab key you just need to use shift okay so i'm using shift and then i'm pressing this tilde so it's going to target all the paragraphs all the siblings after the h1 tag who are paragraphs and i'm going to style them i'm going to use background color of say suppose let's use this corn flower blue color and i'm going to save and if i go back now see that it has not even targeted this two paragraph the third one also right so this is a really really useful selector you know so i'm targeting this h1 and i'm saying hey h1 who are your siblings who are you and all the siblings right all the paragraph siblings i'm targeting so it's taking these two and then again it's going again it's going and checking okay is there any any more paragraphs so it found one more paragraph here so that's why it has targeted this paragraph also but this one thing which is important it hasn't targeted this paragraph because this paragraph is not direct sibling of this h1 right 
this article is a sibling of this h1 now let's try one more thing maybe i'm going to target this h1 and then let's target, try to target this article with the uh, with the squiggly and let's see if it works so i'm going to use h1 then a squiggly then a squiggly and i'm going to target the article tag i'm going to use the article tag and i'm going to give it a background color of say suppose uh, i'm going to use this one this color and let's see if it works it works right so it's going to check inside the section actually section is a parent of h1 right so h1 inside so h1 is going to check okay i'm so my parent is section inside that sec section it's checking okay do i have an article no do i have an article no i have an article let's style it so whenever you want to target any siblings who are next to that particular particular element you can use a general selector called tilde when you target you when you want to target next element immediate next element you can use the plus sign and when you want to target the direct children of a particular element you can use this greater than sign and when you want to target all the children and grandchildren you can use this space character followed by the element which you want to target so basically parent child right parent child something like that so i think this is all about combinator selectors we have only four combinator selectors and as uh, you know i just want to remind you i have created i have created all the notes around it on github so just go ahead and check all the notes so just i have given this link in the dis link in the description of this video so you can just go to the master branch and i have the css section inside that css i have css selectors and if you can refer all the combinator selectors yes i talked about descendant selector child selector sibling selector and general selector so you can quickly go through all of this with examples and you can do some practice around it so let's have a quick pause come back and next i'm going to talk about the next category of selector that is the third one and we have so many choices for this particular category and that's called pseudo class selectors welcome back now let's talk about the next category of css selectors called pseudo class selectors and you need to be mindful about the spelling of pseudo class selectors and there are four different categories of selectors you know the first one is state selector some of these names you know i came up with my own convention so i i called them the first one i have called them state selectors so we have uh, then child selector and then we have type selectors and then we have form state selectors so selectors which are related to form so whenever you you're using form right you know whenever you're creating form and you want to style that form you can come back and you can refer these notes and you can look for the variety of different selector choices we have for the form so that's why you know i have created all of these notes so let's get back to my visual studio and i'm going to create a new file here called uh, sudo selector s c u d o sudo dot h t m l uh, maybe i'm using the right spelling okay and i'm going to create p s e u d o dot c s s pseudo class basically i should have named it pseudo class because we have one more with the name of pseudo so i'm going to rename it to pseudo class dot html and the css i'm going to rename to pseudo class dot css so i'm going to put some html not this one i have to use html5 and let's refer the css file with sudo class.css so i'm going to put some html structure here the first category of selector that we are going to target uh, the first one is a state selector so i'm going to use i'm going to create anchor tag because anchor has different states which i wanted to show you so i'm just going to create an anchor with a text of click me and let's run this in the live server see that so this anchor tag has four different states 
so when you launch the uh, launch this document right this document the first state which you see here this state okay i'm not doing anything so whatever you see here so i'm just going to make it bigger this is called the link state this is the default state for this particular anchor tag so when i'm going to take my mouse and when i i'm going to hover on uh, I'm going to put my mouse on this particular anchor tag. This is called the hover state. So the state is going to change to hover. When I'm to click, okay, so say suppose I'm clicking and I'm holding my mouse, right? So this is called the active state. And now this link has been visited. So you, you have seen that the color has been changed now. So this is called the visited state. So whenever you, like say suppose I go to google.com and maybe I, I'll select, uh, search for the select CSS selectors. And if I click on this first link, now look at the color of this link, right? Right now it is blue. And if I click on it, and if I come back, see that the color, more of a light, I don't know, more of a lighter shade color it has. And if you compare with this color, so this indicates that I have visited this link. So this is a visited state. So we can target all of these states and we can style our HTML elements based on that particular state. So that's what I'm going to do here. So first of all, I'm going to target my anchor tag and I'm going to use the link state, which is the default state when my anchor is going to render in, in the browser. So uh, this time, uh, probably I'll, I'm going to give it a color of, say, I'm going to use this color. Okay, so when first time, I go to my document and if I refresh, okay, there is something wrong. Pseudo class.css. I'm targeting the anchor with a color. Let me try with some font size property. Maybe I'll go with 20 rem and let's see if something happens to my anchor. Yes, the, the style is working, but as it is visited, that's why you know I'm not able to see that color so probably let, let me do one thing i'm going to create another anchor tag so that i can show you so i'm going to click here and click me again something like that and i'm going to save so it's going to target that anchor tag also with the link state i'm going to remove this font size and save and if i go back now i think that color is still not coming i don't know let me try the red color for the link state that color is still not coming i don't know why a with the link color okay let me try the other state i'm going to try ta target the hover so when i'm going to hover on that particular link i want to change its color to dark green colors i'm using some random colors here so when i'm hover you see that the color is changing to green but somehow for the link state, I don't know why I'm not able to see the red color. Uh, let me try. I'm going to have, because this is still showing as a visited. I don't know why it is showing as visited. So I'm going to ta target the another, another state, which is called the active state. So as I said, you know, when we click, that is the active state. When we tap, it's basically used for the mobile phones. So when you tap, on that particular link, you're going to see that color. So I'm going to use active, which is another state. And for the active, I'm going to use a color of say, I'm going to use maybe, I'll go with this color. Let's use this color, dark magenta. I'm going to save. And now look at this. When I'm clicking, you see that? This color is getting changed to dark magenta now i'm going to change the visited color so the color you see here this is a visited color okay so hey that's that's why you know i'm not able to see this red color because when i'm launching the application it should show the red color but i'll try I'll, I'll try to show that to you so i'm going to use visited and i'm going to change the visited color to say which color we're going to use maybe i'll use some something dark and we'll save see that that's why we are not seeing that red, red red color for the link the default state because my link is not in the default state maybe i'll try to close this one and try to open it again let's see if it works in that case so sudo class i'm going to open with live server once again 
it's still showing the visited link so probably i need to start from scratch and create a new file so let me try that let me show you i'll create a temporary file temp dot html okay temo dot html whatever i'm going to use my html5 and this time i'm going to point to my same uh, same link same css file i'm going to use sudo class okay i'm going to create another link with hash instead of hash i'm going to say google.com okay so i'm changing something here and i'm going to say visit google something like this i'm going to save and let me run it open with live server see that a color that red color this is the default default state the link state of the of the anchor tag okay so i can prove i have proven my point so somehow it was not working so let's move on and, and talk about the second category in the pseudo class selector which is called a child selector and there there are so many options you know for targeting the in, individual child element independently so i'm going to remove this anchor tag for now because i don't need it or maybe i'll keep it keep it and i'm going to create a new structure here so i'm going to say article inside that article i'm going to have a h1 okay and uh, or probably because i'm i want to use different child so i'm going to i don't need article i'll start with i'll create some list of elements i'll use emmet here so i'm going to create a ul i want to create a ul and inside that ul i'm going to create five allies and each ally is going to have name something like this so let's see what happens so i've created five different items here inside the ul tag now say suppose you want to target the indi individual element right maybe you want to target this item one then item two item three item four item five independently right you can do that something called pseudo child cell i'm a pseudo class class selector inside that we have something called child selectors so maybe i want to target this first child or maybe i want to target this last child you can do that to do that i'm going to go back to my i'm going to close this one and class so inside ul say suppose you want to target the first child so you just need to use this first child pseudo class selector and maybe i'm going to give it a background color of say this one save now if i go back and refresh okay so i did changes oh sorry <laughs> i did changes inside my tempo.html so let me copy or cut from here and i'm going to paste it inside sudo this one okay save see that so i'm targeting the first child of the ul inside the ul inside ul i have a five different li elements and say suppose you want to target the first one you can use the first child pseudo class selector similarly you can use if you want to target the last child that's really simple you just need to say last child and maybe i'll go with some background color let's go with the deep pink color this time and if i go back see that i'm targeting the last child okay next let's talk about the next selector which is uh, which is a uh, only child so maybe uh, so for that you know i'm going to create different html structure here so i'm going to create some article tags here so i'm going to put some article inside that article i'm going to have a heading one and i'm going to give it a heading of article one okay and uh, i'm going to put one paragraph with lorem text maybe i'll go with lorem 5 4 and i'm going to put one more article and i'm going to give it a inside that i'm going to use another heading one so i'm going to give it article 2 and inside that i'm going to use or maybe i'm not going to give the heading here i'm just going to give I'm going to use paragraph only and inside that paragraph i'll put some lorem text i'm going to save 
Now I'm going to target the paragraph. So I'm going to use p tag and I'm going to say p which is only child. And let's give it a background color of say this one. Now if I save and if I go back, see that this paragraph is having that background color. Why? Because this paragraph is the only child inside this article tag. So it's basically going inside the body and it's trying to see, trying to target all the paragraph who are like only child inside a particular element. Let me try a paragraph here also. Maybe I don't know if it works. So lorem 8, something like this. I'm going to save. It's not targeting this. So maybe it needs a paragraph inside some other elements. So I'll put inside a section here. So let me put this inside a section. Let me try this. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> these selectors behave weird. So I'm putting this inside. Or there are some other rules. I'm going to say it's targeting that paragraph also. So basically it's targeting. It needs a parent element. So I think it's not considering the body. It's considering the tag. Or maybe uh, maybe I'll try to become more specific inside body. I'm going to have a paragraph and uh, that paragraph will be why I'm using so many lorems. I'm going to put some lorems again and maybe let me try to target be more specific. So I'm going to use inside body paragraph who is only child. So I'm trying to become more specific here with only child selector and let's see if I can do that background color of maybe I'll go with the gold color this time and let's see if it targets that paragraph yes it's, it's targeting that paragraph inside body I'm saying and it has targeted all all the child basically so I think it does it's it's working this way that's right. It's when, when you want to be more specific, you can use the body also. I'm going to remove it just not to confuse you. So if you want to select the only child, which, which is the only child inside a particular container, you can use the only child one. Now let's, let's be specific. We have used first child, last child, only child. Now say, suppose you want to target, now I'll take the example of this UL and LI. Maybe you want to target this one, right? The second item inside this UL. So you can use something a selector which has selector with numbers so I can say li and I can write I can use nth child and I can pass this is like a function I can pass the child number which I want to select so I'm targeting inside ul the li second li and I want to change its background color maybe to a green yellow save see that similarly like it's starting from top to bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, you can target from bottom to top also, right? So one, two, three, four, five. So maybe I want to target the item number four. I can use the other way of targeting the children. So I can use nth last child and I can give the number like two. So I'm starting from bottom, right? Not top, bottom, one, two, something like that. So I'm going to give it a background color of say hot pink. Let's see. See that so this way you can target from the bottom basically. So these are some of the uh, some of these some of the selectors which are related to numbers. OK, now we have talked about some of the selectors related to the number. I mean, the first child, last child, only child and child. These are related to number. Now let's move on and talk about the third category in the pseudo class selector which is type selector and I'm, I'm going to clean up everything so I, I want to start from scratch I'm going to remove all of this and don't worry I'm going to I have provided all the files all the nodes here if you go here right and if you click on click on pseudo class selector you'll be able to see all the files all the examples here so I'll start from scratch and even I'm going to create a new HTML structure here. So I'm going to remove this and let's create this time. Let's create a section inside that section. I'm going to have H1 and maybe I'm going to call it main heading. Then I'll create H2 and I'm going to name it 
subheading one and i'm going to create another h2 i need a lot of elements because we are going to learn about type selector so i'm going to target by type so we need different type of elements and another h2 with subheading maybe two and probably probably next one will be the paragraph i'm going to put so let's put some paragraphs maybe lower in three and uh, i'm going to put another paragraph which is lower m5 lower m5 uh, again i'm going to put some heading two this will be subheading three and i'm going to use one more different tag here which is h3 which is more heading something like that so i've created a section here and inside that section i have different like h1 h2 h2 paragraph paragraph h2 and h3 now we're going to ta target some of the elements by their type and to target elements by their type so i'm going to target the section so i'm saying hey target the section and the first one which is which is first of type so i'm going to target the h2 and i'm going to say first of type like we had first child similarly we have first of type so it's going to check inside this section it's going to check whether this h2 so i have one h2 one two three h2 here and we are checking whether it's first of type first h2 in this particular section so it's going to target that first h2 only and if i want to set any color i can set that color for that particular element now if i go back to my document and i'm going to refresh see that so it's targeting that first of type h2 element and it has applied the background color to it let's move on and similarly we have uh, like we have first top type we have last top type so i'm going to target section and probably i'll target the h2 again and i'm going to say whether this h2 is last of type inside that section and if it is yes i want to give it this background color of indico so now if i come back see that so this h2 so it's going to start from the bottom right in case of first top type it's it's starting from the top but in case of uh, last of type it's starting from the bottom so the, it got this h2 and it is like first of type that's why uh, that's why it's target uh, it has it has given the background color of indigo to this particular h2 and next one that we can target is uh, inside the section uh, let me see i have uh, i have i have one h3 right and this this h3 is the only of type right so, so we have inside this section we have h1 h2 we have multiple we have single h1 multiple h2s multiple par paragraphs and single h3 so probably i can target the h1 probably and uh, there is one more pseudo selector which we can use like h1 and like h1 is already there so i'm going to say h3 only of type so there is one more pseudo selector called only of type so if there is only one and only one h3 inside this section that's going to get targeted and it's going to apply this particular style so i'm going to apply background color of let's go with long green this time and now if i go back see that because this is the only h3 i have inside this section Maybe I'll go ahead and add one more H3 probably. Let me just put it here for the timing. Okay. And I'll give it uh, some random text. Now, if I go back, you see that, right? That more heading, the background color of green has been removed because, because now this section has two H3 elements. Because of that, it's not able to target only of type because we don't have the only or a single element single individual element inside this section so i'm going to remove it i'm going to save and go back see here right it got 
the background color once again. Uh, we have nth of type also, so we can target nth of type. So like in this case, we have h1, h2, we have 2h2, right? 3h2 actually and uh, 1h3. So maybe I'll put one more h3 here and more heading two, maybe I'll call it two and this I'm going to call more heading one, something like this. So I can target nth of type. So I have two h2, two paragraphs, three h2 actually, two paragraphs and two h3 elements here. So I can go ahead and I can target section inside the section. I'm asking for the paragraph and I'm, I'm targ targeting nth of type. So this time I'm going to use nth of type, but I want to target the second element. Okay. So there are two paragraphs here. If you see here, right, I got one, two, two paragraphs. So I'm targeting the second paragraph by nth of type. And I'm asking to, uh, to get that element and give it a color of this one. So if I go back, you see that paragraph got the background color. Similarly, we have a section P and this time I'm going to use H3 and we have nth of last. Nth last of type, like we have nth of type, which starts from top to bottom. H3 nth last of type, it starts from bottom to top. So it's going to search for the all the H3s and it's going to target the second h3 or i'll go with one first h3 and it's going to assign this particular style so i'm going to use this light sea green color for now and now if i save see that this is the first h3 actually and it got it's getting conflict here so maybe i am going to go with two only and that's how we're going to see like this got the background color now because this is a second h3 element inside my section Okay, and this style is not getting applied because I have multiple H3 elements now. And let's talk about the last one. I think uh, we have only last one, which is related to not, 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 which is which not, which acts like a negation of something. So I need to look at my HTML structure. So probably I can target. So I'll create uh, for the simplicity and you know, I'll create another article element here. And inside that article, let's put uh, heading one of say article one. And I'm going to put some paragraphs here. So maybe lower M two, three, that's okay. Another paragraph with lower M four. So if you look at this HTML structure, I have an article inside that article, I have one H1 and two paragraphs. So now I'm going to target this article element and I'm going to ask for something like this. I'm going to say article target the elements which are not paragraph. So I'm saying target all the elements which are not paragraph and assign this particular style. So I'm going to say background color of maybe I'll go with this color. And now if I go back and see, so if you look at here, right, this heading, these two paragraphs, so it has a, it hasn't considered because I said not paragraph. So it's not considering this paragraph. So it got only H1 and it's giving that background color to this H1 element only. So if you look at here, right, I said not P means it will exclude all the paragraphs and it's going to target only the H1. Let me try to put H2, uh, H2 here also and let's see if it works. So I'll give it a text of subheading. And I'm going to save. Let's see if article one and subheading both got the background color. So this is really these elements. I mean, these CSS selectors are so important. You know, if you know all of them, I think you can do so many things with this selector. So that's why you know have created all of these notes just for the quick reference. So you can go through it, and you know, whenever you are targeting, whenever you are writing any CSS in any of the project, just think of think of these notes. You know, as a reference manual, you can come here. Go through it and you know you can you can apply all of this knowledge in your current project okay so i think we are good with the type selector the last one which i want to talk about in uh, in uh, 
in sudo class selector is a form selector so i'm going to create form so probably i'm going to remove all of these elements and i'll add a form here so form and that form is going to have an action of not, no action i would say i'm just going to remove the action i'm going to put some elements here so i'll start with the label and this label i'll give it a name of first name probably okay and i'm going to put some input elements also so let's say this is text okay, i got text already here i'm going to use some br tags also br tags because i need to put some break and i'm going to copy this label once again and i'll copy and paste so this will be last name and the next one which i'm thinking is to have a username so let's go with the username and i'll go for the username you know i'm going to specify the type as email next i'm going to have uh, another i'm going to paste another one and this one will be for password and let's keep it let's keep it as text only probably i can make it a password text also so this is for the password then uh, i'm going to put some text area so let's copy and paste this label and maybe i'm going to name this one as read me read me and i'm going to put a text area here text area i don't want all of this to be here rows and i'm going to remove that so i got the text area also then i'm going to put another input element which which will be a checkbox and this checkbox is going to have a label probably i'll go with the label of agree right i agree something like this and i'll put some br tags and last i'm going to have some buttons i'm going to put a button with uh, the label of submit and i'm going to put another button with the label of clear so i have my form ready if i go back to my document you see i have this form right so form has different states like form has different states like form form elements can be enabled can be disabled right they can be checked it can be invalid read only required so all of the form states you know you can target all of those states and you can apply style to those states so maybe uh, i i'm going to remove all of this and maybe we'll start with uh, let's say button so i'm going to target all the buttons and all the buttons which are enabled right and i'm going to target all the enabled button and i'm going to change its background color to something like maybe i'll go with this color okay so if the button is enabled if i go back see that because these buttons are enabled even this form fields this these inputs are enabled that's why it has applied that color so as a button is enabled this color is getting applied there is another state say suppose if any of the button button is disabled right so i can apply a different color based on the based on the button if the button is disabled right so maybe a disabled button i'm going to go with uh, any darkish color maybe i'm going to search for that maybe i'll go with a silver color right so if i go back i don't have any button which is disabled for the for the time being i'm going to disable this clear button so you just need to put disabled here now if i save and go back see that now that's this clear button is disabled its state is disabled that's why that color that background color has been applied to it okay now let's target some of the input elements so i'm going to target the input with checked property so i have this input right i agree so when i'm going to click on this it's going to get checked so so when i'm clicking on this button the state of this checkbox is going to change to checked so based on this checked state i'm going to apply some style to 
style not to not to this input element actually but to the label which is just after so this is this is one of the selector right adjacent selector i'm using i'm going to apply the background color to my label which is just after that input checkbox so if you see see that if i'm this this is unchecked this is checked that's why the background color of this blue blue color is coming on this particular label the next one is invalid so probably i'll type input with uh, invalid so this is another state for uh, for the invalid input so probably in that case i'm going to assign a background color of maybe tomato because if something is invalid we are saying just make give it a background color of red right so i'm giving it to input uh so all the input basically so now this username is email field right so if i type something and if i tab out from this particular input field you see that because this is not a valid email that's why this username this input field has become invalid right because of that it's getting this background color so once i enter any uh, once once i enter the correct email id maybe like this one you see that now it's working fine so this is what we can do if i'm putting the invalid input here the state of this input is changing to invalid that's why that ba that background color is getting applied i'm going to come back to my html and i'm going to make this text area so i'm going to put some text here or maybe i'll put some lorem text here some agreement right now if i come back to text area right right now i can select this text and even i can delete it right but i'm going to make it read only okay so if i come back now i can cannot select and delete i can select it but i cannot delete it right because this text is read only so this text area has a state of read only so i can target the elements which are read only right so i'm going to target the text area which is read only and i'm going to give it a background color of maybe maybe this one right and now if i go back see that that background color because this text area has that state that read only state because of that the background color has been applied and now, now let let's talk about the last one which is input with required right so some of the input field like like in our case if i go back to my html this this username is required right and this email is also required right so probably i'm going to put this field as a required field so if i make it required and if i go back and if i give it a background color of say say maybe a teal right i'm just using this color if i go by c so as this username field is required that's why that it has a state of required field that's why the background color is getting applied i think these are all the all the all the form related targeting the css targeting i have explained so there are so many properties right we have enabled disabled checked invalid read only required and i talked about so many pseudo class selector but you know once you know all of the pseudo class selector i think you will become master in in targeting html element and styling them i think we had enough i think this part of the video is getting long let's have a quick pause come back and i'm going to talk about the next type of selectors so if i come back here the next type of selector again the pseudo one but this time we are going to talk about pseudo element selectors welcome back now let's talk about the next category of our selectors called pseudo element selector and when i and when i'm going to talk about these selectors you know pseudo element selector we don't have a lot of choices here we have uh, we have three here for the for the for the first letter first line and selection and we have most popularly used before and after selectors so i'm going to go back to my visual studio code and i have already created pseudo element and pseudo element.css file i'm going to put some html here so let's go with html file 5 and i'm going to link my css here so i'm going to use my pseudo element.css now let's put some html structure here so i'm going to use h1 let's give it a, some title i'm going to use some one paragraph here and some lorem text maybe i'm going to put this time 20 a longer text and just do some formatting around my 
paragraph so i'm going to put my paragraph some formatting okay i'm going to run my sudo element refresh see that article 1 now using sudo element selector we can target individual part of this text right maybe i want to style the first letter right so i can i can use first letter sudo element selector so i'm going to give the, that example only so i'm going to target my h1 and for sudo element selector you just need to remember this for sudo class selector we use a single colon but for sudo element selector we have to use double colon and there is a sudo selector for first letter so i can target first letter of any text html element and maybe i'm this time i'm going to use font font size property and i'll go with 5 rem as a value i'm going to save and now if i go back see that this a so it has targeted this first letter of this h1 tag and it has changed the font size of this article really simple right i'm going to target my paragraphs so first of all i'm going to change the width of my paragraph to 15 rem probably i'm going to save go back okay so this is looking much better now i'm going to target my paragraph i'm going to use another pseudo selector called first line so i'm going to target the first line of the paragraph element and let's use background color this time and i'm going to give it a background color of maybe let's go with the dark gray color and now if i save see that so you can target the first letter you can target the first line and you can style them next the most important and mostly used selectors so i'm going to target the paragraph this time i'm going to use the before so i'm going to talk about before and after these are the most important pseudo element selector so say suppose you want to target this paragraph and you need to add some content a new content before the element and after the element you can use before and after pseudo selector so say suppose i want to target this paragraph and add something before this l and something after this full stop maybe it's a string maybe it's a number maybe it's a font or anything any any html element i can do that i'm going to use p and before and i can put a content so there is a content attribute here which i can use and maybe for this time i'm going to use this starting starting bracket similarly maybe i'm going to save here and if you see here right i got this bracket see you can ins you can insert a new content new content in the existing existing content as existing html elements similarly i can use b p and i'm going to use the after pseudo element selector and i can put the content and this time i'm going to use the closing round bracket i'm going to save come back see that and i can't stress on this point this before and after pseudo element this this these uh, these selectors you're going to use so many times in your web development career or if you're building web application if you're building websites you just need to remember this these two these two very well because the before and after are most widely used pseudo element selector so I think that's it. That's it about the pseudo element selector. We don't have a lot of options here. I've talked about before and after, and I have talked about the text part selector, like the first letter, first line, and okay, I need to talk about selection also. So let's cover that. So selection is really easy. Selection is all about this. So if I go back here, if I select something, right? Some text here. So maybe I'll try to select this. So you see this color, right? So I can change this color if I want using the selection selector and maybe i'll go with the background color of this one see that so this is going to change the selection color so you can use this global kind of selection selector to change the background color of the selected text so this is about pseudo element selector i think uh, this is a short short part of the video i would say so let's have a quick pause here come back and next we are going to talk about the most important selectors that's the attribute selectors and for the attribute selectors we have so many choices so if you want to target any element which has attribute like the anchor tag has href attribute so you can target html elements based on their attribute and you can style them that's what i'm going to cover in the next part of the video 
Let's have a quick pause, come back, we'll talk about attribute selectors. Welcome back to the last part of the video and in this part of the video, I'm going to talk about the attribute selectors. And as you see in the notes, right, we have several options here. We have a name selector, value selector, contains, starts with pipe selector, starts with carrot selector, ends with selector and contains selector. So let's quickly go through each one of them and they're really easy. I'm just going to create some example in front of you and, uh, and it, would, it would be really easy to understand and implement. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to name it attribute.html and I'm going to create one more file attribute.css. Now I'm going to open attribute.html. Let's put some, some HTML into it. HTML5 and let's link our CSS attribute.css. I'm going to create some structure. So the first category of attribute selector is a name selector. Before jumping into the uh, category of different selectors, you know, I wanted to uh, briefly explain about HTML elements and their attributes, right? So if I talk about the anchor element, right, our anchor element or any other HTML element has a name. It got a name, right? And it got an attribute. There can be one or more attribute that an HTML element can have. Like in, in this example where I'm using the anchor tag, right? It has a href attribute, right? Which links to the external website or anything, right? So similarly, it has a, it has a target attribute also. So as I said, you know, HTML elements can have one or more attributes and we can style our elements, our HTML, HTML elements by using the attribute name as well as attribute value. So there will be combination of name and value. So either I can target with name, either I can target with value. So let's see some example. We'll start with the name selector in the, in the category, which is the first category of attribute selector. So I'm going to use H1 tag for this and I'm going to put, give it a title attribute and maybe I'm going to give it article one. This will be my title. And I'm going to say article one here. So I've created an H1 tag. Then I'm going to put a paragraph here. And inside that paragraph, I'm just going to put some lorem four. I'm going to create one more H1 just for the understanding purpose. I'm going to give the title attribute on, once again. And I'm going to name it article two. And here also, I'm going to write article and I'll put one more paragraph with some lower M into it. Now I can target this H1 element. So this H1 has this title attribute. Okay. So the first category is name selector. So I can target this H1 using the title attribute. So I'll go back to my attributes.css file and I'm targeting the H1 and for the attribute selectors, you need to use this syntax, these bra brackets. And in these brackets, I can specify the, the name of the attribute. So here I'm asking CSS, hey CSS, go ahead, and go ahead, look into my HTML file, look for all the H1, which has a title attribute. So I'm just looking into the name of the attribute, not into the value. So I can target all the H1 with the title attribute. And I'm saying, okay, go ahead and give it a background color of maybe this one. And now if I run this file, See that it has targeted both the H1 tag because both the H1 tag has the title attribute. I'm not looking into the value. I'm just looking into the name of the attribute. So you can use any name attrib attribute name, like in case of anchor tag, you can target the href using the href attribute name. Now this is about uh, the name of the attribute. What about if you want to, if I want to look into the value attribute, right? So maybe I want to target this H1 or this H1, which has a value of article one or article two, I can do that. So maybe uh, I'll create, so I'm going to just comment this one, just not to confuse you. I'm going to comment this one and I'm going to target this time. I'm going to target the H1 and I'm going to see if the title value is equals to 
आर ठी आर्टिकल टू सो इन दिस केस आई एम गोइंग टू लुक फॉर ऑल दी एच वन विच हैज अ टाइटल एट्रीब्यूट एंड इट्स वैल्यू इज इक्वल टू आर्टिकल टू सो इन आर केस दिस एच वन हैज टाइटल एट्रीब्यूट इट हैज अ वैल्यू ऑफ आर्टिकल वन सो ऑब्वियसली आई एम नॉट लुकिंग फॉर आर्टिकल वन आई हैव अनदर एच वन विच हैज अ टाइटल एट्रीब्यूट बट द वैल्यू इज आर्टिकल टू right and i am so in this case what's going to happen it's going to target this one and it's going to apply this style so i'm going to use this dark magenta probably this time and if we go back see that the second h1 got selected and we can see the background color here okay let's move on and talk about the third category of selector which is contains a selector so maybe like in this case i'm just checking if title is equals to article 2 all right and i am going to refer my notes once again just to give you the example right so i'm going to click on this and let's talk about this so we covered value selector so contain selector right so it selects elements by attribute name and value if it contains the whole word now this point is really important it has to contain the whole word which i am targeting here so let's see the example here so i'm going to comment this one now let's comment this part and now i'm going to target all the h1 where title and we, uh, we use this tilde sign for that <laughs> this tilde so i'm checking if title is uh, tilde equals to article so i'm just checking for maybe i need to check and if i'm using the capital article so it's going to target all the h1 so all the h1 is that this h1 this h1 and it's going to check if check if title has a word article in it it has to it has to has a entire word right so i'm targeting the entire word i'm not talking talking about art art is part of the word right i'm i'm targeting the entire word so it should have a entire word so i'm going to give the background color we will go with this one and now if i save and go back so you'll see both are green right because both has article as a as a title now say suppose i change it right i've changed the first one first h1 um, made it small uh, made the a small cap so now see you see right the article 1 is not getting selected because i am looking for the attribute which has a title equals to capital a r t i c l e i am not looking for the small one right so it's going to target the entire word and if it contains that word then it's going to work so if i if i do something like this maybe i'll come back here and i'm going to change it to change this one to capital i'm going to save and go back now it is targeting both the h1 tag now say suppose this has a art word only so it's not going to target that one because or maybe if i change or maybe uh, i'll do something like this and i'll go back to my css and i'll target for the art word only art it's not going to select any of the h1 because it doesn't have a title as art it has a title of article 1 and article 2 so it doesn't select the substring it selects the entire word that's that's the important point you need to remember here so select element by attribute name and value if it contains the whole word let's move on and talk about the next one which is uh, which starts with a pipe selector so starts with a pipe selector so select element by attribute name and value if it starts with and followed by hyphen now this is really really important followed by this hyphen sign so i'm going to show the example here so i'm going to comment this one for now we'll go back to our html and i'm going to create a structure maybe i'll change it now so article 1 and i'm going to just make it small article 2 and this one i'm going to give a hyphen sign and this one i haven't given this hyphen sign okay now i'm going to go back so i'm so i can use so title starts with so i'm using a pipe character equals to so this indicate 
you go and check for all the h1 select all the h1 which has a title attribute and its value starts with article and you target all those elements and give it color of deep thing now if i go back can you guess what's going to happen right what's going to happen just make a guess right so this has a title this h1 has a title which starts with article dash one or hyphen one this h1 has a title which starts with article space two and you must be thinking okay both of them are starting with article right so both of them should get a background color of deep pink but i can tell you that's not going to happen on the article one is going to get selected and not the article two but you would say hey sandeep i mean article two is also get uh, also start article two also starts with the uh, with article word right this also starts with article word this also starts with article word but why why the second one is not getting selected and that's a catch that's why i have made all of these notes and you just need to read this line you know select element by attribute name and value if it starts with and followed by so that's a catch here when you are going to use a pipe character it has to follow by the hyphen sign starts with and followed by so really simple to close this one and if i put that hyphen here you know before two now if i go back see that it has selected both the h1 and there is a selector for you know uh there is a selector which which i'm going to talk about next is starts with caret selector so select element by attribute name and value if it starts with the value so say suppose you want to solve this problem right whatever it has to uh whatever word and followed by whatever letter it is right you can use instead of using this one you use the caret this caret sign and this is going to target both the h1 see that so this is a caret selector so select element by attribute name and value if it starts with the value so there is no condition right the the word word it doesn't need to doesn't need to be followed by the hyphen sign it just and the condition is it just it should start with the word which i have specified inside this title title tilde sorry title caret equal to article okay so it starts with article that's the only condition so in case in our case here this h1 title starts with article this h1 title starts with article whatever it follows followed by i i don't care i mean if it is followed by space followed by hyphen or followed by anything else i don't care this is going to work let's talk about the next one and that is ends with so we we talked about starts with now let's talk about the uh, for, talk about the attributes value which ends with something right so selects element by attribute a name and value if it ends with that particular value okay and for that purpose you know i'm going to comment this one for now and maybe we'll go with uh, this example simple example and i'm going to target h1 again with title and for ends with we use a dollar sign and i'm going to save one so if my h1 which has a title and that title value ends with one just go ahead and give it give this background color maybe i'll go with deep sky blue color this time and i'll go back and you will see the first h1 has been targeted because the value the attribute value if i roll over i don't know why it's not showing the title here it should show so that title should ends should end with article one right so if it, it contains at the uh, the title value contains you know one at the end it's going to target that one or maybe I, i'll do something like this maybe i'll go with tone article tone and article one and uh, now if i go back here now if i go back to my application you see here right article one and article two both are targeted because both ends with o n e o n e something like that so this is about the next category that is ends with particular value 
Now let's talk about the last one, last but not the least is a contain selector. So select element by attribute name and value if it contains a substring. So if you remember right here, we this selector we talked about only word, right? Value contains the whole word. This is, a, this is another contain selector, this tilde attribute name and value if it contains the whole word. But maybe like I want to target all the elements which has a title of art right so it should contain art i'm not targeting the entire word article if i want to do that i can do that so maybe i uh, i'll comment this one and i'll show you so i'm going to pick up that example first that tilde one okay and i'm just going to compare and contrast so as i said you know if i remove this and if i go back i just need to change this a to small a and now if i go back and refresh you see here right it's not selecting anything because i'm using okay because i'm using art <laughs> art so i need to i need to specify the whole word where, when i'm using the tilde so now if i go back you see that right this has an article word if i go here right this has a article entire word so it, it's, it targets the entire word but what if i want to target the substring like the article wherever i have article just go ahead and select it i can do that i just need to replace this tilde with a star and now if i go back see that because it's targeting based on the substring and this article is a substring inside this title also and inside this title also i can i can i can go smaller also maybe i'll target only art and if i go back still the background color has been applied that's it i think i have covered all the selectors so i'm, to, I'm going to go back to my notes and we, we we talked about so many selectors in this word but in this video and actually i wanted to cover one topic in one video so i have covered all the css selectors that you're going to need uh, to target your html element so we talked about simple selectors combinator selectors pseudo class selector pseudo element selector and attribute selector so these are all the category of selector that you're ever going to need to target html elements and write css for those html elements i know this is a long video but i wanted to cover so many things in one video and this video is going to become a reference manual for you and if you don't like watching videos, maybe like a video takes some time to learn, you know, you, you can, uh, I'm going to post this link, this notes link in the description box. So please go, go through this link. And whenever you're working on targeting any HTML element, this, this, these notes are going to help you, you know, just quickly skim through it, go through the notes and you, you should, you should be on your way to target the HTML elements and write the CSS. So that's it for this video don't forget to visit the notes link and if you like it don't hit the, that star button uh, that will help me you know to create uh, that will motivate me to create more notes and uh, hit the like button uh, subscribe to the channel hit the bell button that will also motivate me to create more more videos like this you know more detailed videos about uh, about an individual topic so i'm making these videos uh, related to css i'm going to come up with more css videos html probably javascript react and all those frameworks and i'll move to backend part also and i'll come up with more practical videos also where we will make applications together so that's it for this video i'm going to see you in the next video until then you take care and goodbye